Black Museum. Its affiliated stations present Escape. All of Fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Taron Marlar, and this is Retro Radio Sunday from Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you're already a member of this Weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. Spreading the word about the show helps it to grow. If you're here because you're already a fan of nostalgic audio and print, you'll want to email WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. When you do that, you'll get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows for free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. Coming up, it's a double feature with episodes from Nightfall. Nightfall was a radio drama series produced and aired by CBC Radio, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, from July 1980 to June 1983. So many of my listeners in the U.S. may never have heard about it. While primarily a supernatural-slash-horror series, Nightfall featured some episodes in other genres, such as science fiction, mystery, fantasy, and human drama. Some of Nightfall's episodes were so terrifying that the CBC registered numerous complaints from listeners, and some affiliate stations dropped it from their on-air lineup. Despite this, the series went on to become one of the most popular shows in CBC radio history, running 100 episodes that featured a mix of original tales and adaptations of both classic and obscure short stories. Nightfall was the brainchild of producer Bill Howell. When CBC Radio was revamped and given an expanded budget in 1980, Howell approached the newly appointed head of radio drama, Susan Rubes, about his idea for a supernatural horror anthology series that would push the envelope. Though not a fan of the horror genre, Rubes recognized a hit when she saw one and gave Howell the green light to begin production. And once you hear a couple of episodes, I'm sure you'll be glad she did. Tonight I have two episodes of Nightfall to share with you. Later, it's an episode from July 25, 1980 called Hands Off, in which a scientist invents a liquid that makes people and animals violently hostile, but then spills some of it on his own hand. The episode was so popular upon its first airing that WPBH-FM rebroadcast the episode in December a year later. But first up, from July 4, 1980, it's Love and the Lonely One, where a medical student receives a strange invitation from the cadaver in his anatomy class. This is actually the first episode of the Nightfall series. Henry Raymer is the host with a very distinctive voice using the name Larry Cranst. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. In the dream, you are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. <gasps> Nightfall. Good evening. We begin tonight with the first play by a young Montreal writer, John Graham. It stands by itself as a tribute to the eccentricities of the human heart. He calls it love. 
and the lonely one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anatomy 4. <coughs> I realize this is the first time most of you will cut into a cadaver, but take it from me, you'll get used to it. I will remember my first such uh, model patient. I christened him Henry. Now, when you all become doctors a few years from now, you'll find some of your patients very temperamental. And not my Henry. The more I cut him, the wider he grins. <laughs> <laughs> You realize that... What? We're committing a felony. What? George, if they find out we stole this thing, they'll kick us out of school so fast. Kick us out of med school? Come on, Freddy. Hang loose. It's only a stiff. They'll, uh, they'll blame it on the engineers. Uh, uh, you think? Oh, sure. Uh, oh, oh. Hey, be careful. We're almost there, Tiger. Sorry. Quiet. Wake up the whole damn sorority. I can't walk backwards. We'll turn around. Oh, God, look at her. Here, uh, let me take the feet. Oh, look at her mouth. Ugh. Reminds you what tomorrow morning's gonna taste like. George, are you sure we want to do this? What the hell? Broad still job, didn't she? So what's the problem? We're dropping off a Valentine. Valentine? The corpse of a dried-up old lady? But you're forgetting my pink ribbons. And look, I remember a card. A card? Yeah. You're the guy who reads poetry, aren't you? Yeah, I even looked it up. Here, read it. Dear Sally, the grave's a fine and private place, but none, I think, do their embrace. <laughs> I'm beginning to think this is sick. Sick? I'll tell you what sick is. It's listening to you moan every time anybody brings up that hosebag's name. You know Sally's not like that, really. Yeah. She's a real pain in the ass. How many times she stand you up this week? Well? Uh, I don't know. Come on, Freddy, where's your pride? You want to sit around feeling sorry for yourself and you want to get even with her. Now, come on, Freddy, enjoy your revenge. Well, come on. Grab the arms. Uh, Let's get this stiff up these stairs before somebody comes. Uh, uh, okay, okay, that's it. One more step. Uh, 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 just over here against the door. Now prop the whole bag up so she just sort of drops in when they open the door. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, great. Now let's get the hell out of here. Hey, hey. I can just see those sorority airheads <laughs> screaming their heads off. <laughs> okay, this is it now. When I hit that doorbell, we get out of here and fast. You ready, Freddy? Hey, Freddy. You with me? Huh? What'd you say? Are you ready? Oh, 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 yeah. or something. I don't know. I I saw her in the light. Her mouth was green and she was smiling at me.
Hey, George. I hear Dr. Rob really lit into you on the wards this morning. Yeah, so? He gets your ass in a sling every now and then. Sometimes I wonder why we're doing this. Huh? Neuroanatomy midterm in two weeks. <laughs> it's a bitch, all right. Anyhow, I'm going skiing if it kills me. And if you knew what was good for you, you'd come too. No way. I can't spare the time. Who can? Look, look out. Why? Cardiac Ray, arrest team. They'll get us next time. Bunch of cowboys. But they saved lives. Don't count on it. See you back at the ranch, huh, partner? Yeah. See you later. You? Come here. Doctor? Get in here. Oh, I'm just on wards, uh, ma'am. I really don't think You've got that... two hands, haven't you? Grab those electrodes. Nurse the syringe. Just hold the electrodes on his chest. This got it? Right. Stand back. Hit the switch. He moved. He tough would move if you ran that charge through. How's the scan? Looks like he's had it. Try it once more. Stand back. Hit the switch. Nothing. Well, that's it. Wrap it up. Just leave him here? Up to the order is now. You're... You're not going to try it again? Again. He had a hole in his heart you could drive a truck through. He was living on borrowed time. Look at him. What color is his face? He's a... Uh... Purple. Dark purple. Lack of oxygen. Even if we did get his heart going, the brain damage would be massive at this point. Excuse me. There's a four-year-old in emergency. Nurse, get me the fire, please. So fast. As though nothing happened. Phew. Uh, nurse? 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 Oh, well. Hello, to South. Hello, Fred. Who's this? A distant admirer. Who? What do you want? <laughs> sure took a lot of nerve to pull off a stunt like that. Last night? What stunt? Oh, you wicked, wicked man. Uh, I don't know what you're talking but, about. But uh, I like wicked men. I scare a lot of men, but uh, I bet I wouldn't scare you, eh, sport? Are you a friend of Sally's? Sally? Why don't you uh, throw over that silly girl and find yourself a woman? What are you getting at? Well, would you like to talk it over? Is this some kind of joke? Oh, I certainly hope not. Well, maybe. I mean, sure. Okay. How about... Tonight, where you dropped off the valentine? Last night? Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, see you later. Oh, oh, by the way, how did you know where to reach me? Oh, a friend told me. Who? What friend? The one right beside you. Until tonight. Right beside me, but th there's nobody beside me except... Except... The corpse. Step on in. Uh, you bet. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> you staying cool with cool lips or just trying to think up something nice to say? You, uh, you sure look great. What other way is there? <laughs> something tells me we're going to get along swell. Like some champagne? Champagne? Sure thing. Uh, I really like your dress. Sort of like a flapper. 
out of the twenties. <laughs> and the music. The nostalgia is really the thing these days, isn't it? <laughs> Bottoms up. Here's to better behavior. <sighs> Champagne. What are we celebrating? A happy prohibition, and a short one. <laughs> prohibition. Uh, by the way, where is everybody? Mm, all the little butterflies flew too close to the flame. What? What's that? The banks are on holidays, darling, forever. And all their daddies have told them to come home and work for a living. No banks. Oh. The crash,、mm -hmm. and you're dressed to crash yourself. <laughs> Almost had you there. Hey, before I forget, how did you know where I was this afternoon? And what's your name, anyway? Leave a lady a little mystery, will you? You'll find out soon enough. Find out what? Oh, don't be so serious, sport. Come on, the lady wants to dance. I don't dance very well. well the Charleston's easy. Watch. The Charleston? Are you kidding? No.、Nope. Like this? Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs>、uh, how, how's this, huh? How am I doing? Well, you're doing great, Fred. Just great. <laughs> Twenty-three to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kalamazoo or, or bust. <laughs> This is fun. It's the berries, especially with the bubbly. More? Uh, I don't know. Ah,、uh, why not? Thanks. It's kind of strange here, you know. I mean, where is everybody? I mean, really. What's the matter, sport? Lonely? No, I. I、mm. Uh, uh. Hmm. Why so distant? Hello. Hi. I don't know.、Uh, I mean, I don't know you or anything. Well, what do you want to know? Anything. Where do you come from? Your hopes, your dreams, anything. Hopes and dreams. These days. Yeah. Watch out! I might tell you the truth. I'm not afraid. What do you want?、Oh, most of all, I want to distract handsome young men until they don't know whether they're coming or going. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, nobody ever. Ever what? Never mind. Maybe we should get a little more private.、Mm, of course, <laughs> silly man. Wait here. I'll go in and get ready. Hey, ah.、Um, I... Come easy, easy. I'll only be a minute, and then you'll get to see me as I really am. I mean, that's what you want, isn't it? Are you ready? I'm turning out the light. You can come in now. Oh, here we are.、Huh. But, but you know. It's kind of funny. You just sort of know, know what I mean. When you meet someone special, you kind of feel, well, right from the start. Right from the start. What's、ah! Same old villain, I tell you. The same corpse right in my arms. 
Christ, I can still smell the formaldehyde. Oh, did they get you? What's so funny? <laughs> hey, I told you those sorority girls had a sense of humor, didn't I? We stole a body. They stole a body. Everybody's in the bodies. <laughs> well, no one was in the house. <laughs> oh, sure thing, Tiger, sure. <laughs> it was it was like she came back to life, but younger, as a flapper. Mm. I guess that that's when she was our age. Oh, wise up, Fred. Believe me, those airheads were in the next room laughing their guts out. Yeah, I guess so. But I didn't hear them. Anyway, thanks for the news, Tiger. About time to turn in for the night, huh? Yeah. Maybe if I could get some sleep. Well, I sure can. Oh, night. Night. Oh, hold it. What? Just make sure you're alone. gonna stop tonight. You sure you won't change your mind? It's gonna be fantasy city up there. No, I better stay here. Get some studying done. Oh, come on. It'll be the last good skiing weekend of the winter. Slopes and strokes for all. And you don't even have to ski. Well, uh, thanks anyway. Oh, better be going. There's Janie. See you in a couple of days. Yeah. See you later. Peace and quiet. Thank God. Oh. Hello? Hello, sport. Or should I call you Tiger? You left in quite a hurry last night. Who is it? Oh. It wasn't really that surprising, was it? Why don't we get together? Look, I, I don't know who you are, and I'm sorry, you but I... You know who I am, Fred. This has gone far enough. Don't be afraid, Fred. We belong together. You know we do. No! Oh, my God. My God. I'll, I'll take the phone off the hook. That's what. I'll just take it off the hook. I know who you are. Two o'clock. Feels like two days. Why can't I get some sleep? Oh, no. No. Fred, I couldn't wait any longer. It can't be. It can't be. It is. And you know, it's better when you wait. Go away. Please. I can't. You took me from my bed. You can't send me back now. When you wake the dead, we come to stay. Or at least, I do. I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. How can we know in the beginning? How can we? How can we? Don't be shy. I promise I'll be good for you. No more loneliness. No more fear. No loneliness. No fear. The door, Fred. 
The door? I'm coming. I'm coming. Hi. You're... You're not wearing any clothes. Aren't you cold? Of course not. I've never felt so warm. Come on, Fred. Time to go. Where? To my bed. Uh, the grave's a fine and private place. But some, I think, do their embrace. short today, George. Two weeks to midterm exams and your partner doesn't think it's worthwhile attending anatomy lab. Mm, Fred's never missed one before, sir. I'm, I'm sure there's a good reason. Uh, I hope so, for his sake. All right, let's get going then. Get out the cadaver. Right, sir. <laughs> oh! Oh! What's going on there? Oh, oh my oh. God! Oh! Oh! Fred! Out! Everybody out! Class dismissed! Please! Somebody call the police! Close the freezer! Sir? I said close that door! What are you waiting for? They look so happy, sir. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's how the episode ends. And our second episode ends in a similar fashion, with music that just does not seem to fit at all. But keep listening. Our second episode of Nightfall, entitled Hands Off from July 25, 1980, is up next. A scientist invents a liquid that makes people and animals violently hostile, but then spills some of it on his own hand.
in the dream, you are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. <coughs> Nightfall. Good evening. The handling of volatile chemicals has always struck me as an occupation that I would prefer others to undertake. Tonight's play, featuring a less than fragile performance by Colin Fox, is called Hands Off. It's a cage! All my life I've kept animals in cages. Now I've put myself in one. Here. By my own hand. My hand. Oh, God, my hand. <laughs> One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. How can we know what we're touching? It was just an ordinary experiment. How could I know? How could I have known? Go ahead, Sylvia. Touch the cat. She isn't dangerous. Yet. Why are you so nervous? Touch her. I'm sorry, Dr. Stryker. I'm not concentrating. Lab assistants should not get engaged. I always wanted to get married in May. But Jim says it'll interfere with his bar exam. It's so fresh in the spring. Delightful. No doubt Jim will welcome a break. He works too hard, if you ask me. Well, nothing wrong with work. Speaking of which, is the observation sheet ready? All set. Control experiment 361. Fine. Now, if this solution has the desired effect on that cat's relationship with its kitten, it should also succeed in the operative environment. I'm still not sure I understand. It's quite simple. This solution should function as a negative bait. Negative? A bait which arouses the desire to kill. Oh. If we now observe that our test solution produces a high level of hostility between so intimate a pair as this mother cat and her own kitten, then think of the effect it will have on the primordial savagery of a shark. But why sharks? As a control factor, to distract them from human prey. A diver, for example, could launch a decoy saturated with this compound, and every shark for miles around would ignore him and attack the decoy. Now... Just a few drops in that kitten's ear, if you please. What a lovely fragrance. I'm thinking of calling it rose water. A trade name, perhaps. Uh, but be careful. It takes effect through the sense of smell. Keep your mask on. I think you'll be surprised by its potency. How's that? Should do it. Now, let's pass Junior over to his mum and see how they get along. Good primary response. She's highly disturbed. Excellent. My God, she's going to... Better than I'd hoped for. Doctor, if she's mauling the kitten... Terminate, Sylvia. Huh? Ow! Oh! Oh, my God. God. Sylvia, what have you done? The solution is all over the floor. I'm sorry, Dr. Stryker. I was grabbing the For kitten. For God's I... sake, be more careful. This is a dangerous substance. Quick, let's clean it up. We cleaned it up. And I told Sylvia to go home for the rest of the day. Even then, I should have known it wouldn't be that easy. 
At the front gate, George, the guard, always had a smile for me when I signed out. But not today. I suppose I was too proud of myself to notice. But humans are more devious than cats. When I got home, my wife Doris was there, of course. Her continued support has always made the long hours worthwhile. But today... I'm home. Oh, what kept you? Oh, it was all I could do to keep from phoning. Doris, I've done it. I had to write it up immediately while it was still fresh. The project's a success. Oh, good for you, dear. Hey, dinner's in the oven. Hey, give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, that was the best part of a very exciting day. Was it? <sighs> I wish I could say the same. What's the matter? What isn't the matter? That's more to the point, isn't oh, it? Oh, well, perhaps we should go out tonight. No. No, I... I think perhaps we should let sleeping dogs lie. Sleeping dogs lie? You're not making yourself very clear. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not making myself clear. Dr. Stryker likes everything clear. How's this for Clear. I am tired of sitting around like a lonely slob watching Mary Tyler Moore while you play God in your lab. Doris, this isn't like you. Oh, don't tell me what's like me. I can smell that cheap perfume from here. What's she like, Andrew? She must be a real prize. Cheap perfume? Oh, oh it's my hand. You're lying. Calm down, Doris. Look, we had an accident at the lab Can't today. Can't you ever and... stop talking about your stinking lab? Well, just hold on a minute. I'm going to wash my hand. We're talking about being clear. And you go off to wash your hands. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. Look, if this is all our marriage means to you, that's fine with me. Doris, our marriage means a great deal to me. Uh, now, believe me, you're merely suffering a biochemical aberration. Oh, I am not... Now, let me explain. This is just... No! Let me explain. You know what this is? This is sick and tired of lying in bed at night while you describe how many rats died. Doris, please control yourself. You'll regret this later on. That's where you're wrong, Andrew. I'm tired of always regretting everything. <laughs> Goodbye. Where are you going? Oh, wait. Doris. <laughs> Hands off me. Oh, okay, okay. I'll let you go. I'm not betting on it. Get out of my way. I'm not stopping you. Not that I could have stopped her. I've never seen anyone like that, let alone Doris. By the time she left, she was white as a sheet, pumping enough adrenaline for a small army. If I'd stood behind the car, she'd have gladly run me down. Well, after all, that's what the drug was supposed to do. But to human beings... I washed my hand with carbolic soap several times, but the rosewater odor wouldn't go away. I burned myself with lye, scrubbed the hand raw, but nothing seemed to work. The chemical crawled into my pores, and the more I worked at it, the more I sweated, and the more I sweated, the more it stank. A sick, sweet smell that apparently intensified. Worry does that to you sometimes. It distorts your perceptions as much as it sharpens them. A temporary solution finally occurred to me. Simple. Just put on a rubber glove to cover the contact area until the effects wear off. I put on Doris's kitchen gloves and congratulated myself. Then it hit me. If chemical residue on organic tissue could have this effect, what about the traces back in the lab? The night cleaner, the watchman, anybody who happened through that room could be in for it. I had to get back there. I was halfway out the door when... I grabbed the receiver. Doris? Dr. Stryker, it's Sylvia. I'm sorry to bother you, but I had to call someone. Sylvia, what is it? Oh, I don't know. First, the cab driver was 
rooted in the doormen and the people on the street. When I met Jim, it was horrible. He was so cruel. I, I had to get away. And he followed me. Oh, he was like a madman, calling me names and pounding the door. I wouldn't let him in, and he said... He, he, he said... What? That he was coming back with a gun. Listen to me, Sylvia. You did the right thing calling me. Now, I want you to smell your hands. My hands? Yes. Is there anything unusual about them? They smell a bit perfumey, like... Like this afternoon. The rose water. Exactly. We were probably contaminated when we cleaned up the lab spill. Now listen carefully. A lot could depend on it. There's nothing to worry about if you do exactly as I say. I'm listening. Have you any rubber gloves? Um, no. No lab gloves. But I've got the ones I use for the dishes. Good. Put them on. Tie them tightly around your wrists. They'll contain the effects until we can get to the lab. We'll run some test solvents. I'll pick you up immediately, but don't let anyone in until I get there, okay? Okay. But hurry, please. Sylvia! Sylvia! Jim, you don't understand. Put it down, please! Sylvia! Uh, What's going on in there? Don't hit me. I can't stand this. No. No more. Oh, my God. Open up. Sylvia! Are you all right? What happened? My God. Jim. He, he wouldn't go away. I had to let him in. He's dead, you know. He wouldn't even talk to me. He just kept attacking me. What shall I do? Nothing. Dr. Stryker, you told me these gloves would contain the effects. Give me the gun, Sylvia. No. No, I don't think I will. Why not? Because I don't feel like it. Give me the gun. Stay where you are. You really wrecked my life, haven't you? It's only the rose water making you feel this way. Try to be reasonable, Sylvia. Try to... Reasonable? You expect me to be reasonable after this? Sylvia, if we're going to get out of this, we've got to cooperate. Give me the gun. Oh, nice try. The neighbors have probably reported the shots already. And when the police find you, reeking of shark bait with two bodies in your room... Look, don't be stupid. Now come back to the lab with me, and we'll get this under control. If you kill me... You're killing your only hope. Now, give me that gun. If I give it to you, how do I know you won't use it? On me. Then just throw it out the window. We've worked together for more than three years, Sylvia, and I've always valued your common sense. Be reasonable. I'll open the window. Now. Well? All right. There. There. And that's that. Oh, let's get out of here. No, Sylvia. I've changed my mind. Things are going to be risky enough tonight without you. No! With no! you! a chance, just a chance, that no one had seen me. Certainly there was no one in the corridor or in the lobby. 
but I could still see her face all the way to the street. I had to get to the lab before anybody blundered into the contaminated area. The responsibility was mine alone. When I got to the compound gate, George was on duty. Good old George. George? George? Who's that? What's going on there? It's me, George. Stryker. I've got to get in. Oh, Dr. Stryker. What are you doing here at this hour? Something very important's come up. It's got to be taken care of right away. I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. You know that between 2400 and 0600 hours... Absolutely no one's allowed in the compound. For Christ's sake, George, I wouldn't be here unless it was vital. I've got to get in. This isn't a playground. You should know better than anyone why we have these safeguards. There's highly toxic materials in there. Damn it, George, let me in. Look, I'll give it to you straight. There was an accident in the lab this afternoon, and unless I can get in and do something about it, the whole place is in trouble. You expect me to buy that? I always thought you were an arrogant son of a bitch. But you must really think I'm stupid. Please, George, believe me. It's my last hope. Get out of here before I call the police. Rosewater got to George, if we get to anyone. I stumbled around for more than an hour, avoiding anything that moved. I kept circling the fence, looking for a way in, but the place was locked tight. I had to have help. Some way away, under a streetlight, I saw a payphone. If I called Bob Ladowski from Chemical Warfare, he'd know what to do if anyone did. Then the dogs picked up my scent. They cut me off and chased me here. Here. To a tool shed. Fifty yards from my lab. What? What's that? Sounds like... Rats! Coming through the floor! Jesus! Must be a dozen of them. Gnawing through. I need a weapon. Something. Where? Where did I? Yes. Yes. An axe. God. for it. The dogs will get their turn. Damn stuff won't wash off. Can't even cover it up. Only thing left is... God, no. No. There has to be something. No, it's got to be. I... I... I can't cut it off. Oh, my God! A lab. There's a light in my lab. Someone's gotten in. To the rose water. Listen to them. I haven't got much time. And the police. The neighbors. I, 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 can't, I can't take them all on at once. How can I distract them? How can I ever escape? 
Myself. Well? It's a good play. Get up and throw it out the window. Look, Look at it. Smell it. Hot. Hot. Right there, ma'am. Well, 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 what's the matter? What's happened? It looks like somebody, well, suffocated, I guess. Suffocated? In that shed? How? I'd rather not talk about it. Officer, what is going on? Some poor guy chopped off his hand. His own hand? Yeah, I'm afraid oh, but so. You, you said suffocated. What did he do? Try to eat his own hand? Look, lady, back off, will you? You're getting on my nerves. Ah, get that. The research lab. What's the light doing on over there? You have just heard Hands Off by John Graham. Featured tonight were Colin Fox as Stryker, with Jennifer Brown as Sylvia and Marion Waldman as Doris. Also in the cast were Murray Westgate as George, Ruth Springford as the neighbor, and Ken James as the policeman. Our recording engineer is John Jessup, with sound effects by Bill Robinson. The senior script editor is John Douglas, and our production assistant is Nina Callahan. Nightfall is produced and directed for CBC Radio by Bill Howell. And now, here is a final word from your host. Hello again. Before listening to next week's Nightfall, listeners are advised to eat well and make sure they know the difference between well-fed and fed up. Old and age, what do you think of him? Oh, oh, him, a very fine young man, Massa. Got lovely appetite developed. <laughs> him live much longer time than last other young man. <laughs> How much do you think he be tonight? We will try him with a late luncheon first, golden airs, and then pronounce on his <laughs> performance. <laughs> young men do not always come up. For their profession. What time? Her mother died himself. I don't know. Perhaps not till nine o'clock. Perhaps not then. Many spoon and eggs and some. The appetite of Mr. Lucraft, based on the Victorian short story by James Rice and Sir Walter Bessant, starring Douglas Campbell, Graham Haley, and Abbott Anderson. Radio for heavy listeners. That's next week on Nightfall. Until then, careful of the edge. Fun's 
for the distribution of this NPR Playhouse presentation were provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is NPR, National Public Radio. Thanks for listening to this week's Retro Radio Sunday episode of Weird Darkness. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you like the show, please, share it with someone you know who also loves old-time radio and pulp audio. If you want to hear even more, drop an email to weirddarkness at radioarchives.com and get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows absolutely free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marlar House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness 2023. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next week for Weird Darkness's Retro Radio Sunday. <laughs>